okay i need to update this link right so good evening everybody and uh, sorry we uh, do have internet issue wi-fi issue in this room but someone help me one of your friends uh, uh, help me with his uh, hotspot okay so today is the second uh, lecture so as we went through our first lecture in last week is there anyone that was not present in our first lecture you you and sir you only a few and okay so you did not miss a lot mainly i discussed i was gossiping okay <laughs> in my first lecture i was just discussing our policy and then maybe that was boring but all of my lectures are recorded on my youtube channel so i put the channel address on in, in detail so everybody has connection on detail right access and detail you don't have access to detail so maybe are you new in this semester so you, maybe they are still open uh, uits you need to go to uits and then you need to get it as soon as possible huh Sorry. Oh, okay. But uh, you need to get internet connection. Yeah, uh, D two L. So maybe if you are registered today, then it will take twenty four hours maybe to be uh, the system to be updated. Okay. So all of my lecture videos uh, will be uploaded on my YouTube channel. So it is C S I T X parts. So so still getting uh, problems. So. The link is in D2L, okay? So, the link is in D2L, and then in please watch if you miss the first lecture by so as soon as possible. Maybe tomorrow, please watch my first lecture. Is you okay? Maybe while you are driving, but be careful. You can you can listen, and then while you are like maybe doing your workout exercise, you can do that. I usually watch my video many videos while I do. Okay, or something else. So in D2L, so here is my section two. Okay, so in our first lecture, I discuss mainly about our syllabus. So syllabus is our start here or uh, content page. Okay, so please follow the syllabus, and we will follow our course schedule here. So according to our course schedule. So actually, we are updating our resources resource every semester. So this is the version four of the schedule right now we're following, but later you will see that version five or something, then please follow the latest version. Okay, and I am sorry. Two, 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 two. The syllabus version is version 2.0. If you later find a, an updated version, please follow that, okay? So, as I told you many times, maybe in our first uh, first first uh, lecture, that this class, this lecture will be heavily practice oriented. If you practice, then it will be a good course for you. Okay, but if you do not practice, then it will be the worst. Or course lecture for you, course for you, okay. But this is our actually you will we will give you hard time, intentionally or unintentionally. I say sorry right now, but our intention is not to give you hard time, okay. But our intention is is to make you ready so that your journey in computer science or software engineering or IT in this field becomes smooth. This is the core only course you will learn object oriented programming. Object oriented programming is a new paradigm in programming and software development. OK, we will discuss that soon. Uh, today, so our first week was intended to review our content, review that review 1321 content. So if you did not take 1321 here, or if you 
took that long time ago okay or if you took from other other institution i would like you to request at least please watch or look at our slides in our d2l page in your first year experience page and see that what do we cover we cover in our 1321 okay i have all lectures videos uploaded in my previous semester in in d2 in my youtube channel okay so maybe you will see that in last lecture i didn't i did not teach anything intentionally okay so but today i, I will teach a lot of things i will cover a lot of things that is also intentionally okay so let us do we will review 1321 okay and that means some university is called cs1 and we we call this this class 1322 in some university it is called cs2 okay you will learn you got 1321 your programming foundation and then you will get your object oriented programming foundation in this course okay so as we in 1321 we learned data type right everything in this world has a type if we ask a normal common question what is it and the answer is a type right what is it phone is a type this type is phone right there are different kinds of phone different types of phone okay various kind maybe hundred or thousand kinds of phone right but in general they have a common name that is called phone right okay so everything in this world has a type so there are in programming languages we always deal with data every data has a type sometimes numeric data we help we handle numeric data like right? some of them are integer or whole number we call them integer type data so in data type we have int okay int type so integer byte short long these are all for numeric and whole numbers okay for a short number smaller number that is length less than 127 okay or greater than negative 128 the, those fall into byte type and that takes one byte memory space one byte equal to eight bit and then short type takes two bytes and long type takes integer type takes four byte and then long type takes into and uh, there's eight bytes so these are all for whole number numeric number whole number and then for decimal number we have two data types that is double and fluid and character double is four by uh, four byte and fluid is eight byte okay integer is four byte long is eight byte and we have another type that is called character type is used to handle with a single character only one character okay then there is a difference language to language difference a little bit for instance in c sharp we we call it bull bool is used for boolean type that has any true and false answer either true or false nothing else nothing in between either true or false okay in binary we say true means one number one and false means zero number zero and string is a built-in data type okay so in c sharp we call string either is in lower case in general lower case or in it can be upper case but in java string s is in uppercase and in java we call the type boolean phone this is the difference between c sharp and java little bit you see that these are mild. so these except so this these how many here six right and then seven eight these eight are called primitive data type primitive data type that means a byte type hold can hold only byte type on only integer type data so these four hold only integer type data nothing else and these two hold these two hold only decimal type data it cannot hold any string or alpha alphabet and character holds only one character okay bool or boolean holds only one thing all either true or false so these are called primitive data type okay and and string it can hold any either an alphanumeric data either a numeric or alphabet 
Okay, string value, string literal we call that is enclosed with double quote. So string is widely used. So this is why norm in modern programming languages, string is built in as a type. So these are the called, these are this string is called built-in data type, but not a primitive data type. But others are all of these are primitive data type. So as I told you that everything in this world has a type, right? This phone has a type. What is this? It's a computer. It has a type. What is it? I'm a man, right? I'm a person. I'm a human. I have a type. Okay, this is what is it? It is a table. It is a, it has a type, right? Everything in this world, ask a question, what is it? You will get a reply, answer, right? That is type. Okay. So except bound these eight primitive data type and then string type, nine type, all other things we call the type is called class. Everything is called a class. What is this? This class is a type in general. Okay, a class or a type is not visible. This is a concept. It's common noun, proper noun, common noun, is right? In general, that things, okay? A type or class or type cannot be visible. But an instance of a type, it is called either a variable or an object. If our type is one of the primitive data types, eight primitive data types, then the instance is called a variable. Otherwise, if our type is not one of the eight primitive data type, that means class, then we call the instance as an object. In physics, we call this particle, right? Everything in this world is an object. As a human being, I am an object, you are an object, okay? This universe, this whole universe is an object. The earth is an object, computer, chair, table, is an everything is an object okay sometimes some objects are combined together to create a larger object okay in this course we will learn how to create our own type for instance how to declare a type phone once we create once we have a type for instance we do have this built-in type right then we know how easy to create a variable of that type of instance so my number is an instance of type integer that means it holds an integer value this is variable a variable holds only one value at a time it cannot hold two values so if, if it holds one value for instance 42 and if later later if you put my number equal to 43 then 42 will be replaced by 43 it is a placeholder a variable is a placeholder that holds the value that depends on the range of the type and type of the type okay so it is in common it is expected that you know all of this in our 1321 okay so we know we, we know how to assign values to uh, to a variable so here we are assigning 42 against my number okay so floating variables are, are uh, assigned with values that ended with f and f f is in lower case or upper case can be if you do not put f then it you, you need to put double type double type takes eight byte memory consecutive eight byte data okay and in order to develop an efficient program we also need to consider the memory space okay so if i have for instance okay if i want to stay in a hotel or a motel in one night okay how many bedroom how many hotel room i wish i should reserve okay that is regular i should reserve only one room right if i want to stay alone right okay should i if i have enough money should i reserve two rooms three rooms four room this is a waste of money, right? Nobody will like me. Even the hotel manager or salesperson who wants to sell more rooms, but they will not like me. Okay. So if my data is enough that will fit for byte type, I should not declare it for integer type as integer type. That is a misuse of memory. But for the small program we will be discussing in this course and then in, in, non, in a regular life, 
that are very small, so we have our enough memory space, so we don't care. For instance, initially we usually put integer type, display integer type, okay? And then one thing I like to you to recap everybody how to take input using keyboard, console input. So there are different rules for different programming languages. In C sharp, we use we use console dot right line. This right line is a method and console is a class. We use dot that means right line is a method of dot means it means of preposition of console class. It is defined in the console console class. OK, and we have some specific methods, for instance, parse in 32 dot parse and then console dot read line you see that how one method can be used within another method okay we will learn this in this course so this is the specific way that you have to take input by keyboard so you are if you are new in c sharp okay uh, or java please practice this too and for now i like everybody to memorize these three lines for string, you need to use read line, and for integer, normal integer, since it is 32 bytes, so we say the method is called int32. Okay, and then, and people who are taking C sharp lab or C sharp course uh, or whatever, no matter, please memorize this for now. Okay, so and then for Java, we need to mainly this, this, these two lines, this, these three lines. But this is the main line that what we do, we create a scanner object named scan, and then we pass system.in input device. Input device is our keyboard. We connect the keyboard with the scanner, and then whatever we scan in the next line, whatever we type in and press enter, that values goes to the variable word. Word is a variable over here, but we will say it as a as an object because this type is not a primitive data type it is an it is a class actually string is a class although it is built in okay and then i can if i want to in take an input of an integer type then we have the method next int so in C java we have the method next in next line but in c sharp we have the method different read line parse this method so in this course, we will simultaneously practice or use two languages, Java and C sharp. It does not have any C++. Okay, you know that who are new here, you need to take a lab course, one credit lab course, either in C sharp or Java. Okay, but in our lecture course, we will learn both, either C sharp and Java. There are some topic, a few topic in this course, that are language deep dependent. Only they are available only in Java or only in C sharp. As a student of this course, you need to learn. No matter what is your lab language, you need to learn the content, some content in both languages here. Okay, if, even if you take Java lab, you may need to some learn some C sharp. Our goal is, is to make you ready with at least two object oriented programming languages. So I can confirm you that if you learn these two object oriented programming languages by the end of this semester, you will be very confident that you can learn any other language within a few weeks yours by yourself. Then you don't need to help. For instance, what I will be doing here, I will be teaching you how to drive. How to uh, sorry, how to learn how to learning how to drive, right? Remember the point we are taught how to drive. Okay, we draw, we learn with a, maybe a, a car. Maybe people give us like old car or pet car to new uh, driver, right? So maybe a Toyota or SUV or whatever it is. Okay, but when you learn how to drive, Toyota, it is expected that when you get a license, then expected that you can drive a Honda or Sears or any other regard, right? So we expect that once you learn two languages, you will be able to learn yourself any object-oriented programming language. Okay. 
so for now please practice or memorize these three lines okay how do we take input for a using keyboard and how do we print that in the keyboard okay so in throughout this course sometime i will give you some assignment or homework in this course i will give you some homework you don't need to submit it to me you need to do it yourself you need to submit it to yourself so that you practice okay so theory class there is no homework but i will give you to homework to return but i will definitely give you some homework to practice okay that's good and then throughout the remaining lectures we will use just print to say either console.println in c sharp or system.out.println in java so whatever we say even you say print so if you will understand that i mean by print this in java and this is in c sharp we will later know what is mean by system dot dot what is mean by out dot is mean by print and maybe you should have known it in 1321 okay has anyone any questions so far okay if you have any question please raise your hand okay and then let me know so pseudocode and then in, in la, we learn in 1321 pseudocode how to write an algorithm in pseudocode then we implemented in a specific programming language okay in this course we will not go through pseudocode a lot only only a few thing okay only we may allow to write pseudocode in in the, in the test in first test in the second test and third test you will not be allowed to write any pseudocode but there is a reason that something writing pseudocode for declaring a class we need to write a lot of code lot of lines but declaring a it right <clears throat> better writing a program is only a few lines okay so our goal is to make it simple <clears throat> okay so in 1322 we discuss pseudocode if conditional statement like if else if okay multiple else else if else statement for instance we discuss this conditional statement in 1321 and then we use curly brace to to denote a group of statements okay and we use uh, we discuss how to declare a method okay so this method every method has a return type if there is no return type we put void and then put method name and then we put parameters so how do we know that this is a method after a name something if we see a parenthesis so print then there is a pair of parenthesis then print is a method method in other way it is called function in object oriented programming language whenever a function a function is called a method okay in procedure language it is called a procedure or a function but in object oriented programming it is a function so this is a method this is a method this is a method it is not a method but it looks like a method so okay so this is the exceptional that if else if this if this is not a method although it has a <coughs> parenthesis okay and then we discuss how to declare a method and we discuss we know that how what is the return type and return statement of a method a function returns a value at the end of its execution the return statement be the last statement should be the last statement of a method so this method it returns type is void that means it does not return any value it is not ex return expected to return any value but still it may have a return statement this is only return statement and but it cannot return anything so for instance it cannot say return one or return zero or return something if a method has a return type except void then that method can return a that type of variable value okay but if a method's return type is void then still it have a return statement not return value this is a quiz, tricky question on interview question sometimes you may ask if a method has a return type void can it have a return statement yes 
if return type is void still it can have a return statement this is a return statement you can check it works but it cannot have a return type okay sorry sorry re return value so you cannot return any value it will error give you error the return test statement usually be the last statement but if there is a condition then it can be the previous statement okay and then if a variable have a method has so you see that here this return type is int so at the end it returns a choice here this choice also is an integer value whenever a method has some values declare some variable in it within its parenthesis then we call this parameter or argument okay so in our 1321 we discussed this we discussed for loop and we discussed while loop and do while loop okay there is a substantial difference between a while loop and a do do loop or do while loop can anyone recall what is the difference yes 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 so a while loop, a while loop, what does it do? It executes some statement without checking any condition. Okay, that means while, sorry, a while loop, sorry, a while loop first check condition. If the condition is true, then it execute the body and it backs to here. Okay, as long as the condition is true. But a do while loop, it executes the body without checking conditions so the condition is given at the end so after executing at least one time it checks the condition if the condition is true then it comes back again okay and the do while loop while is ended with a semicolon but for the while loop while is not there is no semicolon after while okay for do while loop a statement is executed at least one time but in while loop there is no such guarantee that the statement will be executed. So here, so here i equal to zero, and it says if i while i not equal to zero. That means it, that means it we should do that, right? So what will be output for this this thing? Let us think i equal to zero, right? And it says while i not equal to zero. Is this true or false? False, right? So it will not go to inside. Okay. Then it will print the result is I. So what is my I value? Zero, right? It will print zero. Okay. So then we discuss in 1321 arrays, right? What is an array? array is a collection it is called a set in mathematics we call in math we call a set or math or statistics we call set what is a set a set is a collection of similar entities right a group of similar we say set of books set of chair set of cloths a set of student right Okay, then what is the difference between a set and an array? An array is in some languages, it is called a list. In many languages, it is called also list. Like in Python, it is called a list. But in Java and C++, it is called Java and C Sharp and C++, it is called an array. So the diff main difference between a set and a list is that a list can contain duplicate value. Okay. But a set cannot contain duplicate value. One item only one time. You understand? Remember that when you, are, you work for set in, in math. So in array, what is the symbol in array in programming language? This is square bracket is called the symbol of array. Here, tropy, this lowercase t, top, top, t -R -O -P -H, this is the name of the array, and its type is tropy. And this is the symbol 
of that is so in java and c++ these are the two independent lines actually this is the way how an array like trophy is declared and initialized its size will be 10 but these two lines can be combined as a single line like this okay so this uh, is a simple thing that we discuss in 1321 okay so if you get hard time to recalling this in 1321, then I have all of my lecture videos in pre for our previous semesters in my YouTube channel. So this is my YouTube channel. If you go to playlist, then you will see I have my other playlist, for instance, CSE 1321, then fall 2020. Okay. Then I have also all my open videos for CSC. 1322 in fall 20. Okay, the last semester, immediate last semester video. So all of my lecture videos are here. If you have some time, if you want to go ahead with me, okay, then you can watch this video ahead of me. We will do same thing, almost pretty 80 percent, 90 percent thing same. We will do, okay. Better if you watch, if you have some time, if you want to if you watch this video ahead of time then it will be good yes or do you have a question yeah oh sorry yes okay next time <laughs> thank you i will never ask sorry i, I do not give attention to you okay so what i was telling so i will so if you need so you can quickly watch our 1321 lecture video from my previous semester okay and then we discuss searching and sorting searching algorithm in 1321 we learn searching searching means traversing an array that means how to find a specific or target number from a list okay and we discuss two dimensional array as well as the, so two dimensional array is, is suitable for a table where data is organized in row and column that is called we say is in other words in mathematics we call matrix right so two dimensional is array, is array is used for matrix manipulation or table data manipulation okay so in two dimensional array there will be two loops two for loop in order to access a two dimensional array element we will have a two uh, two loops one loop inside another loop this is called inner loop and this is called outer loop outer loop is used for row and inner loop is for count column so we take a row and then we go column column element row and column crossing element okay and java has a length attribute this is not a method length attribute and c sharp has a length attribute but c sharp is l is in uppercase this length is used to find the array length number of total elements exist in an array okay and then we discuss array processing means finding a value or specific value in a list or an array or searching that is called searching or sorting rearranging arranging an element of an array either in ascending order that means from smallest element to the highest element or descending element descending means highest element to the lowest element sometime actually people even i used to did sometimes people struggle what to understanding what is mean by ascending or descending is c e n d i so ascending means we know so that we say a right a how do we remember that a is start with a small vertex right and then it 
gradually it becomes wider. So the ascending means one, two, three, starting with a smaller and then it goes, 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 goes larger. And here descending means we can remember that like D, upper D is region like this, right? So you start with, you start with a larger number and it goes with a smaller number. Okay. So in array, we, we learn with how to manipulate data, how to find a specific number in an array or how to sort the elements of an existing array, okay? So the one, once we find, do that, then also we do how to find average of all of the elements ex that exist in an array, okay? Or then we can find average that is called mean, or you can find median, mode. Mode means the exist element that exists very frequently, many times. Okay, so these are mainly 1321 part one. That means non-object oriented programming content. Has anyone any question? It's good, everybody is good. Okay, so I like everybody. Okay, so please who sit in the back, please. Please, I have a request. My humble request, do not waste everything, any minute. Do not open your device. I will not see you. I will not go to and charge you, okay, for that. But I, I, I heavily discourage. Please do not open your device unless for the purpose of this course, okay? We are not giving attendance requirement. If you don't need, if you cannot give attention to my course, you don't need to come here. You can watch this lecture video later, right? From your home. Uh, but as long as you are spending your time, sometimes time is more important than money, right? So why should you miss your time? Please do not do social networking in this course while you are in this course, okay? At the end of this semester, I like everybody be succeeded. Everybody. Maybe this is my last time, hopefully, I will be teaching this course because I have uh, been uh, I switched to teach other courses, algorithm and uh, data structure courses. <coughs> so in this hopefully this will be my last semester. I believe I like everybody to well in this course. But fortunately that did not happen. I expected that every semester, but that did not happen. In last semester, maybe we got uh, 65 or 67 percent got A and B, that means one third, still one third did not get, right? I will tell you the reason. Many students, they do not, do not come to uh, lecture. So I don't see you, what you are doing when you are at home, right? But <laughs> when you are here, sometimes I do enforce. I like you not to, I tell you, don't open your device and then, okay? That means some kind of Thread maybe. I, I don't like to thread you, but it's motivation. Take it positively, please. Okay. So if you don't have any questions, so in 1321, actually in 1322, we I especially do a lot of practice. I will do live coding for you, okay? And if you follow me, then you will see that I have we will use Eclipse, we can use Eclipse, NetBean, IntelliJ, or Microsoft uh, Visual Studio. But quickly, I use sometimes, uh, I use Replit, R-E-P-L dot I-T, that is an open source IDE. Okay, so if you go to my, uh, so everybody here, uh, is there anyone that does not have a Replit account? Maybe you are new, sir. Okay, so you can see me later. Or what you can do? So replit repl dot it. So it's very simple and free. So create an account right after this class and tonight. Okay, and it's free. And then what you will do? You will save your program over here. So it's an ID that we use online ID. We need to have internet connection. And then you see that in my replit, I have several hundred programs. 
So even if you start in this semester, by the end of this semester, you will have may have 100 programs or 50, 60 programs. So, so you see that replete. See that this one is C plus plus. This one C sharp. This one Java. This one C plus plus C sharp. Do you see that? By looking this, I can see I have several hundreds program. Okay. So in replete, so if I go to my account and then if I see to the array so when i'm typing that it is showing me all of the program that i discussed to the array so for instance linear search in to do array in cpp i don't need cpp actually i need java searching in search in to the array example one java and same program i do have to the array search problem two in c sharp and same thing i should have to do array example linear source i should have same program in in c sharp okay so this is an example how do we do a linear source or searching process in a two-dimensional using it in a two-dimensional array right so in a two-dimensional array data are organized in, as row and column so how many rows this is the first row this is my second row this is my third row and fourth row and five row right it has five row and how many columns i do have one two three four five it is a five by five array two dimensional array that means two dimension we are for row and second one is for column okay so in this program for instance this program it says if a specific number this program will do a specific number for instance 13 whether 13 exists in this two dimensional array or not if it exists then how many times it exists okay so in this program if i run this program quickly it will show me that 13 do you see this 13 exist over here one two two actually i see one time is 13 exist here three times it says three times let me see one time about here another time here and another time here so it looks 13 exist here three times so if we this is my target value is 13 okay if i change my third target value maybe negative 13 that does not exist here then it will execute this statement that th negative 13 it should be negative 13 okay negative 13 it does not exist is not in the array so in your test you may have one of the test question like this okay so you will be for instance you will be given a data set plain data set in a plain format like this okay for instance you are given a data set like this without any 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 grouping okay so if you are given a data set like this so and then if you are asked to assign this data set data set in a two dimensional array then what do you need to know first so it is two dimensional array so you will be given a data set like this for instance like this or very plain like this okay very simple data set like a list a list of numbers okay so then now you are called if you are asked to assign this data set into a 2 by 2 array or 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 okay so you need to according to the question you need to organize it for instance if your data set is if you want to assign it five five columns okay that means you need to take five each with a, so you need to assign like this way five first five then second five the third five fourth five the last five if there is a missing last one is like four number the last number will be zero okay so like this 
so here this there is a how many how many rows one two three four five five rows and how many columns one two three four five so in the test you may be given like plain data like this and according to the question you have to assign this is part of a test right you should know in this 1321 course that how this plain value is assigned in a, in a matrix or array two dimensional array has anyone any question about this why i have done this this one row is going and is within uh, grouped in within curly brace and then after that it is ended with a semicolon comma and then another row ended with comma then another row ended with comma another row and with comma then the last row since this is the last we don't need any comma here and this is the this is the you see that when i move my cursor it shows the pair of pairing uh, press so here this one is the pair of the top one so maybe it should look good if i would i would do this right so at the end there is a semicolon so what does here initially this program it counts initially initial as zero then initially we said is found equal to false this is called a flag okay and then we are looping through we are looping through what we are looping through so the for int i equal to zero to i less than five you cannot say less equal to five so index array index start with zero okay the last index is n minus one so here you can put hard coded or you can say in java this is a java program right we know that there is a uh, in java there is a um, field it is called array dot len length that is fine okay we can say array dot actually length is the row length so we need to first row and then column so in, in my 1322 one course i discussed this but since i'm not going to in depth so i'm not i'm going to Discuss, but if you need to see in detail, you can go to my 1321 course and see that in, at some point I discuss this. Okay, all of my videos has pretty pretty self-explanatory title. By looking the title, at least you can imagine or understand what was discussed in this lecture. Okay. okay so i am sharing this this program with you in your uh, please one program here and uh, this is the maybe corresponding program in c sharp Almost pretty same program in C sharp. Okay. Uh, oh, so this is this is a different one, right? One thing I like you to do: take a program, choose a program in Java, convert it in C sharp. Get a program when you get a program in in C sharp, convert it into into Java. Okay, and vice versa. So in our, if you go our first year experience uh, uh, website, a, a -E, so resource space, resources space, at the end, all the way end to our resource space. So you will see this, this others, key difference between C sharp, C++ and Java. So we are not discussing C++ here, but C Sharp and Java. Only there are a few differences. Okay, I like everybody to download this slide and then see the basic difference between Java and C Sharp. I believe everybody here knows at least one language, right? C 
since it to complete a third into anyone, you must know at least one language. Even if you do not know either of these, C sharp or Java, it's not hard to to learn this. For instance, Java and, and C sharp, we have 80% similarity. Okay, the basic difference will come structure of the main method, output statement, input statement, some key, keyword, constant declaration, and then switch. Four of these we already discussed in our past 30 minutes. So in main method, in Java, in, in main method, M is in lower case, and C sharp, M is in upper case. One difference is there, okay? And the uh, output statement in Java, we use system.out.println method, and C sharp, we use console.write line method. Okay, and okay, so this input statement, Java is this, and C sharp is this. So I like everybody, so please download this slide. So if you are new, take a printout and then put side by side, then, then please take a white paper, piece of paper and then try to write this line four times, five times. For now, even if you are new, just memorize it. Or put this code somewhere so that you can copy and paste quickly, okay? And then there's some keyword difference that in, in Java we use Boolean, whole, and then in Java here we use bool. Okay, these are the four already difference out of, uh, and then uh, we already discussed, okay? And then constant declaration in, in, in Java we use static final, and uh, in C sharp we use constant, C-O-N-S-T keyword. Okay, and then Swiss case, in Swiss case, C sharp does not allow any missing breaks, break statement, but Java allow, allows some missing break statement. So, so far we have discussed, so we already this five or six, first six, difference we discussed already and other things are pretty same okay okay so maybe all programs i have this in java i should have also in c sharp Okay, sorry, I don't have this one here. Linear source, linear, okay, I do have somewhere, okay. I have a few more minutes only. I need to go to another slide. Has anyone any question so far? Okay. Then module one, part two, is also I was supposed to complete this today, but maybe I cannot. So module one part two. Okay, one thing uh, string. Okay, string operation. Review of string operation. Okay, maybe I I will I will uh, string operation. I will share a video from my previous semester course, okay, string operation. Okay, so then please review it quickly. Watch the video, then you will be able to, to uh, know it. So video should be string. Okay, typecasting, string operation and selection statement. String method. Okay, using method for string and math operation in Java. Okay. I will add this lecture in, in your 1322 course. I like everybody to 
this is an hour long video so please if you are not familiar with sting operation then please watch this video i'm skipping for now sting operation okay so i will add this in our playlist okay so the module one part two it discuss about object oriented programming okay so what is i'm, I'm give you just start today tonight a few minutes or 10 minutes so what is an object oriented programming okay object oriented programming is a new paradigm in programming it is really a good concept of programming before that before object oriented programming was introduced maybe in uh, in 1960s or 70s early 60s people used if you have if you know someone very senior maybe retired person they used to program when they used to program they used to use very like whole bag of memory chip they got very large okay so procedure oriented programming okay so then what is the procedure oriented programming in a procedure oriented programming everything is organized as a procedure operation okay in object oriented programming everything is organized as a as an object since everything in this world has type right we we'll learn that so everything in this world is called an object so why not we should program in that fashion remember that previous maybe uh, still there it is uh, is, uh, is exist in some countries in some countries or still even here you see there are some handymans they work here to fix our home right handymans so some handymans they know everything a single person can work for electricity he can wear sewerage he can do gas he can work for heater he can work for plumbing roofing flooring everything right maybe if you give him some uh, some wood and then stick he can make your door windows right okay so it was used to people build house used to build house like that way a person he used to do everything so then what happened it took 3 months 4 months 5 months sometimes more than a year to build one single house because he has to buy some stuffs and make the window by himself right but now what we do in modern and quick for quick building uh, making a building so people know that there are there are windows and door and other stuff already ready made building right in stores by like louis or home depot so a person who is building a house he just put a blank space for a window right and he just asked to buy an window a window or a door and just he set the door over there so he saves time so he don't he does not need to make the window build the window or door separately right so that means a window is an object or a door is an object that is built in and what we are doing if i in a, in, in a room need 100 100 window we will buy 100 window and we'll set up set that up quickly right if a house need 10 doors then they will keep 10 such standard size of the door and they will buy door from the store and then they will put the door in place right so that what is the advantage of doing this way faster right development is 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 our home development or improvement is going to be faster right okay same fashion so in programming while do we program while do we develop our software why should not we do that the concept came that we should develop our application or software as we develop our house or building or something right we have some ready made stuff someone build it for me i borrow it i buy it or borrow it and i use it so reusability is the main concept in object oriented program right 
So in object oriented programming, in order to reuse what we do first, we create or we declare a class first. As we know that a class, what is a class is a type, right? Once we create a type, we can create any number of object of that type, right? So that means in whenever there is an, a factory or for window, window building factory, right? The factory, the machine is running, it is making windows com continuously, right? Okay. So in object oriented programming, we will declare a class first. So what is a class a type? So a class is a concept or a blueprint or a template of what? a group of similar objects. So say window or door or, or this is a coffee mug. Okay. So whenever this type has is, is format has this factory, so it is making a maybe a one cup in every second, like few seconds, right? So in object oriented programming, we declare first a class. Class is the blueprint or main foundation of object oriented programming. Then object came from come from the class and in instance of a class is called an object so how do we declare an object we use class keyword and then class name followed by a, a pair of curly braces this is a class in some languages like python that does not use curly braces but that use indentation space okay so this is a class dog is a class Okay, and then what does a class contain? A class contain two things. Some variables. Okay, and some methods or function in order to work on those variables. So a class has two ingredients, some variables and some functions. The functions in a class are called method. Okay. You see that everything in this world has two types of characteristic features. For instance, this phone is a phone, right? This class is name is phone, right? And it has some features. For instance, we can say height, we can say white, right? Okay, we can say color, we can say price, weight, model, right? What else? There are many others features right okay these are the attributes so every phone has these features so this is another phone it has color maybe color may be same or it has a model maybe same or it can as a price it may be same or different right so every object in this world has at least some characteristics that may, may be a single or a combination of other characters that make that object unique in this world. So if I have two phones of the same kind, same, same type, still we have two phones, right? Because if they have same type, price, model, everything is same, but they may be at different in terms of one, at least one characteristic. One feature, what is that? Yes, sir. Maybe model number, same. Let us consider the model number is duplicated, same. Serial number, maybe same. <laughs> okay, yeah, we know that serial number are different, model number are different, that's good, but I'm talking about the physical. So for instance, is, is so uh, we cannot put, we cannot on a table, we cannot put two phones at the same place, right? Can we put same place? We can put one after another, up and down, or side by side, right? Can we put two phones in the same place? Never, right? Even two needles we cannot put in the same place, right? If we get in the same place in the wall, then that is single item. Then, then those are not the same, two different, right? Okay? And then this phone said those are the attributes, values. Okay? And then it has some action or function. It does some functionality, right? What are the functions of this phone? Okay, call. Okay, I can make a call. Okay, I can receive a call, right? 
I can maybe browse, I can text, texting, right? Those are the functions, right? So now we understand the difference between attribute, that means as there is a declare as a variable, and function, you understand? Function are the actions, okay? And if I say price, price will be a function or an attribute? Yes, function, so it's a price, it will be an attribute, right? And but if I say call or text, that is an action. So a class contains two kinds of things, some variables and some functions in order to work on those variables. Okay, so then what is an object? An object is an instance of a class. Okay, whenever our type is class and then we call that as an object. In this world, everything is an object. The whole universe is an object. Maybe God has many universe like this, right? Who created this universe? Okay, we know the planet. The universe is a combination of many planets, right? Million, million planets. So a planet is a single object and this, this building is an object a building is 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 a combination of many items door roof everything is an object as a human i am an object you are an object i have my hand is another object finger is another object right so sometime we combine some object in order to create a new object so object oriented programming is developed in the fashion how do we deal with object in our real life so soon you will learn if you do not still do not know object oriented programming if you took 1321 then you should have a good actually uh, foundation of object oriented programming if you see our 1321 course at least we spent three weeks we spent three weeks to declare about object-oriented programming. So you see that these lectures, okay, here, introduction to object-oriented programming. So if you are new, if you do not know object-oriented programming at all, so then you can go our lecture 19, then 20, 20, 21, 23, 22, these this few lectures, okay? Last five lectures, if you do not know object oriented programming at all i like you and i urge you to watch these videos before you come to our next lecture because in the in my next week i will finish this i will review everything that may not uh, be helpful for you if you really do not know object oriented programming so i like you please you see that all about my video uh, my videos here okay so in, in 1321, we discuss object-oriented programming from here, from lecture, lecture 19 to 19 to, so 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 20, but five, six lectures, okay? So please spend this time during this weekend. If you really do not know, if you do not have any experience about object-oriented programming. So in this course, we will go in depth of object-oriented programming, not the foundation that we, we already discussed in 1321. In this course, it is expected that you have foundation of object-oriented programming. You know how to declare an, a class, how to create object, how to write getter and setter method, how to uh, override the twisting method, how to write a constructor. Okay, it is expected that you know this, but still, if you remember, cannot remember this, this weekend will be a good time. If you spend a few hours this weekend, then your life will be easier because this, if you don't understand this or remember or recall this basic object-oriented programming concept, you will get a hard time from week three. Okay, has anyone any question? Okay, sometime, I'm sorry, I'm telling you in advance that sometime at the beginning, I may give you some hard time so that you can recall everything or recap everything so that when you, you learn, if, if you 
smoothly or completely go ahead go with me for the first six weeks then this course will be good for you maybe our fastest is after four or five weeks right don't wait please until the test until the test week okay you will not be able to do it okay so in case you need help so it is a good thing that i have all my previous semester's lecture video please watch them and in case you you uh, need any help please send me an email but one thing my request if you send me an email please mention your course name still i am getting email that asks some question that does not mention his section name at least course name that will help me to quickly identify your issue okay if you do not tell me that uh, uh, that so you are new here for instance uh, let me tell you so if you do not mention your course name okay then if you ask a question i will not reply to your answer so please mention your please look at the syllabus and follow my communication policy okay so that i can help you and you can benefit it okay has anyone any question okay thank you so much and everybody have a good weekend